Hello and welcome to Bikes, Boats, and Bivouacs. Today we're going to be cooking on cast iron pots. And the recipe we're going to make is an easy one for those of you just starting out. We're going to make a beef stew. Now I'm going to be cooking on charcoal today, so join me as we put together a cast iron dinner. Okay, for today's meal, we have a number of ingredients that we're going to use. So we'll start in the front. This is for a 12 ounce cast iron pot. I'm going to use three potatoes, six carrots, two onions, about three ounces of mushrooms. Uh, canned mushrooms would be okay. Three cloves of garlic. A two pound roast. Beef. Water. And some flour. We'll also use green beans. If you had local green beans, you could use them. Or if you're running out of uh, space to store things uh, in the refrigerator and the camper, you can use a can of string beans. I like to use grapeseed oil because it holds up well in high heat. We're gonna put a little Worcestershire sauce or Washer Sister sauce in it. And I use uh, beef broth, but you could substitute uh, half and half beer and water or wine and water, either a red wine or a Marcella wine, uh, and a regular beer would work. For our seasonings, we're going to have uh, some rosemary, some thyme, salt and pepper, and parsley. Now the parsley you see there is from my garden on the plate, but you could use a store-bought parsley. So these are the ingredients we're going to use. In our bowl we have a tablespoon of salt, uh, three quarters of a teaspoon of pepper, a half a teaspoon of thyme, a quarter teaspoon of rosemary, and a bay leaf. I have a tablespoon of Worcestershire, a quarter cup of oil, I use grapeseed oil, you could use vegetable, olive oil would probably burn, and four cups of beef stock. So in order to cook with cast iron, there's a couple of things we have to go over, and there are certain pieces of equipment that you're probably going to need that would be helpful. So let's take a look at the gear we're going to use to make the beef stew. Okay, the first thing we see here are the cast iron pots. I have two of them out here. Now, this is the pot I'm going to use because you can see it has legs on it to sit on top of the charcoal or if you're over a campfire, the amber is from the fire. This Dutch oven has a flat bottom. So if you're cooking on a stove, whether it's gas or electric, this would be the pot you would want to use without any legs. If you're cooking over charcoal or a campfire, then you're going to want to use one of this design where it has legs. So we're going to use uh, this design. I bought that one at Cabela's. Um, I also have lodge pots. And the thing I like about these are, you can see this ring. You can actually stack these pots on top of each other and put coal on the top and bottom. So you can cook it like an oven with heat on the top and the bottom or you can just use it as a regular pot on a stove. I also have a lighter, a charcoal dust, a uh, little dust pan and sweeper. I use this to move my briquettes around. Gloves because the pots are hot. I'm gonna be using instant charcoal because we're gonna burn all that stuff off before we start cooking. Wooden spoons for inside the pot. This is a uh, charcoal chimney. You put your charcoal in here and light it. It can suck oxygen up from the bottom and it gets the coals nice and ready. And then you can dump it. This is what I set the lids on when I pull them off with this. 
So what we do is we can pick up a lid when they're hot, right, and I can set it on there and it's not on the ground. So that's what that is for. Okay, so what do we cook this on? Well, today I'm going to use my charcoal table, and these are about $100. And you can see it's just a table that uh, I can put the charcoal on and set the pots, and it's off the ground, so it helps with these old knees I have. And of course, right now, nursing the cracked fibula here. Uh, so this is real helpful. They also make a similar table like this with two gas burners on it that you can hook up to your camper, to your uh, RV gas. Uh, and of course, you would use the other pot for that one if you were cooking on one of those. So either one of those will work. Set this on the ground first charcoal dust doesn't sit on the table. I need about 20 briquettes to keep the pot at the correct temperature. So uh, that's about a half of that. Briquettes look great. Warm out like that. You want to leave this sit on the on the uh, cooktop because uh, we'll probably have to start up additional coals down the road to finish the cooking. Plus, it's extremely hot, so if we leave it there, no one's going to touch it accidentally. I use my charcoal tongs to level this out. See, I got about 20 briquettes on there. Not going to count them. Next time I touch this pan, I'll have the gloves on and use a tongue. We set it right over the coals. We make sure we can get to the handle. Quarter cup of grapeseed oil. Remember, I use grapeseed oil because it can tolerate the higher heats. First thing we want to do is we want to brown the meat. So I took the roast that you had seen earlier and I cut it into chunks. I cubed it and then I put a little salt and pepper on there and I floured it. So as soon as this oil heats up, I'm going to put them in here to brown. they cook you might need to add a little more oil. Got a nice thing about cooking in cast iron pots, especially if you're camping. You know, um, you can be sitting around the fire in your chair talking to everybody while you're cooking, and you can involve multiple people. You know, a lot of times kids are looking for something to do, or even newbies, some new campers. So you can put them in charge of cutting vegetables. I uh, can cut up the carrots, potatoes, uh, 
onions, etc. So they feel like they're a part of the meal and everybody can continue to talk and have a good time and enjoy each other's company while dinner is cooking. So it's a great uh, one pot meal. I'll give you a look. Take a look down inside. And there's what we see. Ready to add some spices. Okay, now that it's time to start adding our spices, the first thing I'm going to do is add, is add the uh, Worcestershire sauce. There is uh, gives it a little bit of a bite. I'm also going to add my seasoning. As you recall from earlier in the video, I have a bay leaf, thyme, rosemary, uh, salt, and pepper. So it took about 15 minutes to brown the meat. And now uh, I've added those mixtures and we want this all to come together. So this is going to cook for about another 30, 35 minutes and then we're going to start adding vegetables. I'm going to add this uh, garlic. This is just smashed garlic while it stews. And there are cookbooks uh, that are great for starters, and um, they also talk about the number of charcoal briquettes that you should have and where they should be, whether they're on the bottom or the top. Uh, one of those books is uh, Dutch Oven Cooking with Tony Kano and uh, a lot of the recipes that I use including this one came from this book and then I modify them uh, the way I, I like to cook. So uh, Dutch Oven Cooking with Tony Kano. There's the book. And this is not a paid endorsement. Okay we have that in a nice boil. So what I want to do now start the other briquettes. I need about 12 to 15 briquettes. So I'm going to start those and then by the time they're ready I'm going to move the pot onto the new coals and then I'm going to take the existing coals and put them on the lid to give it more of an oven uh, style cooking. So it'll take some time for those briquettes to get ready. So while I'm letting this simmer I'm going to uh, start that. Okay, looks like our charcoal is ready, so we're going to set the pot for the second part of the cook. I'm now done with this, so I no longer have to leave it up on the table. flatten out my charcoal so that it'll fit on there. Now if I didn't have my gloves I could use this to pick it up. But I have my gloves so I can just do this. Remember we're still going to be using those charcoal for the top. Take my lid off to add my vegetables. So those six carrots look like that. So 
chopped up my three potatoes. They look like that. onions I just quartered because as they cook down they'll fall apart. Mushrooms I just quarter. I don't like slicing them real thin. I like them to have a little bit of texture. I had mentioned earlier, I have just a can of string beans. Uh, string beans are in season near the campsite where you're at, and you can go get the fresh ones, you can use them. Uh, but if not, if it's winter time, you know, it, it helps to, uh, for storage, if it's dry storage and you don't have to keep it in the fridge. I'm gonna give this a stir. to cook about a half an hour yet. So total cook time about an hour and 15 minutes. There you can see what it looks like cooking. It's pretty good. Don't want to drop the camera in there. We're on the coals. The lid back on. Remember, I said we were going to use the existing coals to help the top. I'm just going to take some of these and place them on the top. All right, so we're gonna let that cook for about 30 minutes. The only thing I have left to do is add a thickening agent, but I prefer to use cornstarch and hot water. I mix that together and I put it in there. And I have better control over how thick I wanna make the stew. That is really looking good. I have a half a glass of hot water, and I'm going to use Argo cornstarch. I'm going to use two soup spoons of Argo cornstarch, and we'll see how thick it gets. If I want it thicker, I'll add more. Uh, if I want it thinner, I just add more water. You want to mix that up. You really want to make sure you, you get it mixed up. We add the next batch. It doesn't take long for it to tighten up. Remember that parsley? I'm going to add that now. That is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Let's see what it looks like in a bowl.
we're done cooking it, we take it off the hot coals and set it on the concrete or somewhere else that's safe. If I leave the coals on the top, that keeps it warm. Uh, and it keeps the cast iron warm while people are coming and going and eating. Um, so that's a, a great way to uh, you know, keep it at the right temperature for a longer period of time. And then when everybody's done, hopefully the pot is empty. So let's take a look and see what our dinner looks like. And there is your dinner, a beef stew made by cooking in cast iron on charcoal, perfect for a campfire, perfect at the campground. Everybody can enjoy each other's company while they're making this meal and then enjoying this meal. So we've eaten our meal, it was delicious. And I just wanna go over a couple things about cleanup and show you how I take care of everything. So you can see the charcoal table is just swept off. I just sweep the charcoal into a pile uh, with those little paddles that I showed you before and uh, dispose of the charcoal in a pit and then the table can go away. In my box I store all of my equipment so it's all at the same exact place. Okay. For cleaning the pot, I empty the stew out of there. I take hot water and I rinse it out and just use a cloth and go around it. And then if it's sunny like it is today, I'll put it outside to make sure it really dries and there's no water left on it. And then I spray it with uh, or wipe it with a light coat of oil because you don't want any moisture or rust getting in there. So uh, generally I'll use that grapeseed oil. Uh, on there and then the same with the lid well hey look that was the uh, that was the whole process from start to finish in cooking with cast iron and charcoal I hope you enjoyed this and it gives you the confidence to go out and try it on your own so if this was helpful don't be afraid to subscribe ring the bell for notifications and give the video a thumbs up until the next time have a good day